Ah, good evening, traveler. And welcome to the Penumbra. Take your seat, please. Take your seat. The junction lies ahead, so if you'll allow me just a moment. We are now passing through the Swamp of Titan's Blues. Our next stop, the Moonlit Hermit. It's dark in here. Where... where am I? Hello? Good morning, little human. <gasps> Did you sleep well? Who is that? Where are you? Of course. I forgot you creatures had such limited vision. Keep the bioluminescence, if you would. <gasps> there. Is that better? I... I don't know why you brought me here, monster, but I'm not- Then it might be wisest to stay silent. Listen. Looks like an insect larva, but not one I've ever seen before. Pure white, no eyes, a weird warmth emanating from it, and that sound. Like a heartbeat. Like the numcap. I took the specimens I could, and I killed the rest, but what even is it? My recorder, where did you- I'm going to be direct, because I don't have time for anything else. I brought you here because I wasn't sure how much you knew about my grubs, and I couldn't have you telling your soft-minded friends about them. I now know that you know nothing, and so this entire exercise has been a waste of my time. <laughs> So, what? I get to go home now? Of course. I'll just give you your recorder, and you'll be on your merry way. As soon as you do something for me. As soon as I what? There's no need to sound so surprised. Barter is as old as language. It exists for monsters and humans and everything in between. I give you freedom. You perform a service for me. That's not a trade! You kidnapped me! I could kill you instead. You wouldn't. <laughs> Keep. Lights out. Turn the lights back on, or I'll... <laughs> <laughs> this contraption is not the only one of your records I've examined. You have a knowledge of plants. How to care for them, treat them, use them. And as it happens, I have a sudden need of someone who understands the workings of flora. You want me to work for you? The diagrams I found hidden beneath your floorboards suggest you'd take great interest in my craft. Vivisections of monstrous life, incomplete formulae on magic spells, theoretical diagrams of creatures unseen. You desire to know the universe as it is, and not as it is told to you. And if you cure my patient, you will be allowed one long, lingering look into that grand infinitude you wish to know. Patient? Who would... <laughs> or I can kill you right now, in the dark, and you will never know the wonders you could have witnessed. <laughs> so, which will... The it... first one. That was... Very fast, are you certain? Is there a plus side to the dying one that I'm missing? Because if not, I'm good. Keep. Retract the walls. <gasps> Where are you taking me? Nowhere. We've been here all along. Whoa. What is all this life? All these plant species I've never seen. Those trees over there. Those are ever-deads, aren't they? But they're only native to... The western wastes, yes. And that's a thatch of inky clover. And that's dayshade, and... And... There are specimens here 
I didn't believe were real. How did Welcome you... Welcome to my keep, little human. The castle from which I rule this swamp. The font from which every titan's bloom springs. It is your patient. Research log entry. I guess it doesn't matter. This is probably going to be the last one I ever make anyway. For whoever finds this, my name is Amaryllis of Exile. My home is the Second Citadel. And please, I need you to get this recording there as fast as you can. I don't understand it all, but I hope that this will help them prepare for what's coming. Because the things I've seen out here, the things I've been told, it's out there again. Saints, just keep it away a little longer. I don't have much time. I was escaping, trying to get out of the swamp, but my ankle, I think I broke it. And now that thing is after me, that... I don't even know what to call it. Like a monster. No worse. Because I made it. I probably don't have enough time to retell the whole story, so I'm going to piece together the recordings of what happened in the Living Keep. You should hear it for yourself anyway. So, this is my final research log. And my final subject. The lizard creature that calls himself... Lord Aram, he who rules the swamp of Titan's blooms. And you, of course, are Amaryllis. How did you... Is it... is it working? Saints, my recorder, it's really working! <laughs> Mark's gonna miss this. I should wake him up. I should. But first... <clears throat> Research log, entry one. I am real... No, no. <laughs> Make it sound professional. I am Amaryllis of Exile, and I, along with Mark of the Craftsman's Quarter, have just invented a consistent process by which sound can be recorded. <laughs> That's how. I've only had time to listen to a few of your recordings, but I know enough. But wait. You should have had plenty of time to listen through my recorder. It takes... Nearly two weeks to get to the Swamp of Titan's Blooms. It might take two weeks for you creatures. We arrived within two hours. Two hours? But that's impossible. Oh, just hold on. This is a lot. I've told you I have no time for this. My keep is sick. And if you ever want to return to... Mac and the whole gang back in the cartographer's quadrant, you will have to cure it. Preferably before it dies. Right. Okay. So, how do you know it's sick? The bond that passes between myself and this life form is more than your pitiful mind could ever comprehend, Amaryllis. I always know what it thinks. Always. That doesn't count. I still think you were lying. The plant house can sing? Saints... I get to examine the first plant life form that can sing. And you responded to it. It said something you could respond to, which means it thought of something to say, which means... Saints, the plant can think. Not very well. Can we move along now? I think you've inflated its ego enough for one day. It has an ego. <laughs> Here. Here what? This is just a rock. This is the Keep's sickness. You are going to cure it. You want me to cure rocks? I want you to cure whatever this is, and quickly. Then come get me when you've solved the problem. Farewell. But, wait, what? I'm not done asking you questions yet. Then ask them and be done with it. I have important business that needs attending to. All right. When did the sickness start? Irrelevant. That'll be all. I can't figure out what's wrong with this until I study it. So study it, then. I don't see what that has to do with me. I need tools. Materials. I need scales and measurements and... Scales? Measurements? I don't care how many pounds of cure you make. I just want a cure. You really don't have 
anything like that around here. The forces I work with don't need them. I understand your measurements well enough to know that I am past them. They are not what truly matters. But... That was your final question. You have the sickness in your hand. You have a greenhouse full of supplies. Anything else you need, you will have to make. If you want a cure, Aram, I need to make a diagnosis. And if you want a diagnosis, I need my tools. And if you want your freedom, Amaryllis, you'll have to figure it out on your own. Keep. See that her survival needs are met. Fine. You may allow her one cushion of her choosing. Just don't let it distract you. <clears throat> I'll check on you in the morning. You may ask a few more questions then. But Aram! Enough, you stubborn primate. Stay put, mind your work, and do not follow me. Research log entry 4227. I followed the lizard to... Whatever the hell this thing is. Just a few more, keep. We won't be making many specimens today. It seems like this is some sort of workstation for him. But it's alive. A closed flower bulb as big as my hut, and vines keep coming out of the walls and feeding it weird things. A basket of dead beetles, a pile of rocks, a gourd full of pulsating liquid. No. No, it's not eating. It looks like a machine. Not like the devices Mark makes with gears and springs, but the lizard just makes small gestures and the whole thing comes to life. Now you recall the design we discussed this morning. Very good. Ugh, I can't see what's happening. I'm going to try to get a closer look. Excellent. Now let's take a look at this one. There's something moving in the bulb, but I can't... Saints above, this is going to sound nuts. Rilla, you are going to sound insane. Those things it ate, they're moving. The stones are like legs. The dead beetles are all melted into one another, and they're alive. The lizard knows how to make life. Another failure. <clears throat> Keep. Again. Of course I mean now. Act like your life depends on it, you ridiculous... The human? What about... You. What are you doing here? I, uh... Do we have to re-examine the terms of our deal, Amaryllis? A plant this large is always in need of fertilizer. Observations on the subject Lord Aram, native to the Swamp of Titan's Blooms. Easily annoyed, very picky about the details he cares about, completely dismissive of the details he doesn't, selfish, haughty, and, unfortunately, extremely competent. I was never going to fight my way out of here like Damien, or talk my way out like Mark, and without tools, I was never going to cure his keep sickness. But I was the best researcher in the Citadel. I'd found a thousand cures before. Why not a cure for kidnapping? Are you still there? Go! Yes, Lord Aram. After all, if this keep held things like that, things that could create life, surely it had all I needed to trick a lizard into setting me free. And if I gathered some data that might unlock new boundaries in future research along the way, I mean, that wouldn't be a bad thing, right? So, I pretended to work on his cure while I took inventory of what Aram had in his greenhouse. It should have taken one day. It took me eight. Because Aram's organization system, or his lack of a system, or... <sighs> Listen, I've dealt with bad organizers before. Mark once told me, to my face, 
that he kept all his springs in the right-hand drawer because on the day he got them, he was feeling right. But I could deal with that. Because even if Mark was the only person who could decode his system, at least he had a code. And that meant some sense was being made somewhere for someone. But Aram? He had nothing. He had less than nothing. He had negative organization. If you need orchids, go find them. That's not what I asked. I asked where they are. The orchids live where they like, obviously. Am I supposed to count and place every seed? Kind of, yeah. You really just mix all the plants around? Even the weeds? Have you ever tried telling a weed it has to move? They can't talk, you know. No, I don't talk to it. I just kind of move it. And put up with all that whining? Ugh. They can't talk, but they can whine? I just... It would make me more effective if you knew where, generally, your specimens are. And all that effort for what? I don't know. So you could find them more easily? All in one place instead of spread out across the greenhouse? Ridiculous. We will never speak of this again. You want an inventory? As in a list? (laughs) Yes, as in... (sighs) It doesn't even have to be written down. I'll take anything at this point. And so you expect me to keep a list of all I've ever made? Those projects are (laughs) all finished, whether successes or failures. Sure, but if you kept track of what made the successes work, you could keep having successes. (laughs) Oh, so now you think you can predict the future, do you? No, obviously. But if we can figure out the rules that the future operates on, the mathematical and physical and chemical laws, then... Then you may be queen in your tiny sandbox of what's understood, while I dance among the stars of the impossible. (laughs) Of course I know these mathematical laws. We invented them long before you. And then some of us, the ambitious ones, moved on. Because in order for something to be measurable, it must be small enough to measure. And some of us want more. And he kept doing that, hand-waving at some huge more without ever explaining what he meant. I could see some of it in action. Plants and animals and fungi that moved in ways that shouldn't have been possible. Do not be tempted to approach their fronds even when they molt. When serrated palms feel threatened, they become sharp enough to cut through solid rock. The name is a misnomer. It doesn't walk so much as kick. The locomotion is an afterthought for the walking bonsai. Excellent reflexes. The macrachnids may look frightening, but they're quite docile if fed appropriately. Which is to say, not at all. No matter how much they beg, don't. And that big plant that made life? That hermit? I had to know what that was. I had my theories and they were killing me because... (sighs) We'll get to that soon, I guess. (sighs) All right. Research log entry 4241. I think I found some more of the illness on the keep's walls, right by the tops of these cacao trees. Taking samples now. It's hard, but brittle. Colors ranging from white to light gray. On the inside, there are striations that could be... uh, Like the lines inside some gems. Like diamonds? Or... Wow, I really don't care about rocks. But... Hang on. These ones look almost like tree rings. Petrified wood, maybe? But crustier, flakier, with this gummy white stuff on the inside, like, uh, bad skin. (sighs) This would be a lot easier if I ever listened when Angelo was talking. Rocks and skin care. This is maybe the only patient out there he'd have a better shot at curing than me. Hmm. What's that? Here at last, my little specimen. Ah! Amaryllis. Ah! Uh... 
Thanks. Don't thank me. Apologize. Apologize? Climbing trees when you should be working. Sitting on branches unannounced. I was working. I was just examining this... whatever this is. Oh, so you were. Well, I doubt your efforts will be needed much longer. You see, I think I have found the path to the cure myself. You... really? Indeed. A great accomplishment. Would you like a demonstration, Amaryllis? Subject, Lord Aram. Input, the opportunity to show a successful creation. Observations, widening of the eyes, shortened breath, rapid flicks of the tongue, suggesting both increased temperature and heightened pulse. Then he seemed to notice it on himself, and the old Aram was back. A demonstration, strictly for your duties, of course, to help you find the cure faster. Uh, sure, yeah. I'll watch. Excellent. Look closely. I am certain this is something you have never seen before. You don't know... (sighs) Saints! What is that thing? Did it come out from that... from that... The hermit, yes. (laughs) Observant, aren't you? The thorax resembles a centipede's, but the head... Is that a crow's beak? No, it is this creature's beak. Currently. Rotating ball joints connected to legs that end in... Stone. It's actually stone. And that noise. Like it has lungs? Or a voice box, but I don't see evidence of... It's in pain. Of course it's in pain. At that size, its exoskeleton is probably buckling. And with legs that heavy, it can't even stand. What have you done to this thing? Created it. How? In no way it didn't consent to. It can't have given consent before it was alive. My, you humans do enjoy your ultimatums, don't you? But... Its pain bothers you, does it? Would you like me to bring an end to it? Don't kill it. It's one of a kind. Hmm... She would rather it suffer, so that she can study it. Well, the human continues to surprise. That isn't what I meant. I wasn't going to kill it anyway. But end its pain. That I can do. Now watch closely. You, subject, look. Here. That's more like it. You are called a chiselpede. You have been created within the universe, wherein there is a place called the Swamp of Titan's Blooms, wherein there is a lord called Aram. I am he. As my creation and the creation of this swamp, you exist as a level among levels, and you will listen to the levels closest to you, and you will trust that they understand the larger picture better than yourself. That means you will ignore things outside your purview, such as physical laws, which are the business of the universe. You will trust me to inform you what is possible and what is not. Is that understood? Good. Now, rise. What? It is precisely as you see it. It shouldn't be able to stand. It's physically impossible. And yet... It stands. Here, Chiselpede. You see this sickness, this blight? I need samples of it. You are to gather them and bring them to the source from which you were born. Is that understood? Good. Now I think we've taken enough of this creature's time. Off you go now. What was that? That is the nature of my work. The impossible... Phenomena which can be neither tamed nor explained. Magic. In a word, yes. Those will be all of your questions for today. Farewell. But wait! I just want to know how it works. (laughs) Well, how disappointing. I thought you might have learned something for once. What's that supposed to mean? Always looking for rules, formulae, guarantees. Humans. (laughs) 
Maybe I would have learned something if you actually explained it. Hey, come on! You're gonna magically bring that thing to life, and you aren't even gonna tell me how you- So, I gained three things from that meeting. A bigger sample of the disease, a sense of what Aram could do, and a deadline that was closing in fast. Because if he'd only agreed to let me go if I cured the keep, what were the odds I'd get to leave if he cured it? I tested my first formula an hour later. All right. Fake petrification cure version one. A light acid found in the berries of the dayshade, testing to see if it softens the stone-like exterior at all. Ow! Ugh. Okay, uh, that might be a little too soft. Version four, it's been six hours of testing so far. Suitably soft, but when squeezed... Yeah, no, he's not going to buy that. Version six, 20 hours. Painted this one green. Yep, that's a green rock. Version 11, 26 hours. Ah! And each morning, Aram still came by and still expected me to have questions. In retrospect, he looked tired too. But at the time, I was too distracted to tell. Here, some tea from the serrated palm's leaves, taken after group meditation. Don't thank me. It's solely to prove you wrong. <laughs> I hope you enjoy it. You wouldn't believe the training regimen the Keep and I had to go through to tame the walking bonsais in the first place. It was worth it in the end. A great delight to prune a plant that prunes back. There. You see? Merely skittish macracnids. They need only to know that you mean them no harm. Once you get them galloping up walls across the ceiling. Subject, Lord Aram. Input, several days spent together. Observations. The subject is self-involved, condescending, overly nostalgic, and if his insistence on sharing his accolades with me is any indication, he is also extremely lonely. So lonely, in fact that I doubt he even realizes it. And none of that forgives him. It just distracted me. Made my research that much harder. But every project has challenges, and I beat those. Eventually. All right, okay, all right. This is Petrification Rilla, Cure 17. Oh, saints, I'm tired. 42 hours of this. Have to get out of here. Have to. I think, I hope, that I'm onto something. The solution resembles a paste, and it's easy enough to apply with the hands. Composed of two parts green seed sap, one part acid berry, trace elements from a few other specimens, and three parts aloe. Burns like you wouldn't believe. Doesn't matter. Testing now. Ah! It doesn't hurt, at least. It's working. It works, I can go home. <laughs> I really did it. It's soft and it's green and so are my hands. Ugh, come on, Rilla. If the monster's hands look like limes when he's done, he's never going to buy it. Okay, just one more. Just one more try, and then you can sleep, so get... What the...? That's... I know that song, but... How... Uh, 
Damien always said that staying up all night working on my experiments was never going to do them any good. It never meant much coming from him. The night famous for his five-night staring contest with a blinking gorgon wasn't so generous with sleep for himself, either. So I knew when he said, You'll find the answer if you sleep, my love. In rest, the saints move through us. What he meant was, I'm worried about you. Take care of yourself. I love you. But that just made me want to listen even less. I don't like being told what to do, especially by a knight. Even if I said the same thing to him when he worked too hard. Damien. Anyway, I say that only to make the point that that night, Damien was right. So tell him that for me, I guess. Uh, a, a handle. If it's applied with a brush, he'll never touch it. And he won't know it's just paint. Uh. Saints, I hope the lizard has a coffee plant somewhere in here. Research log. Entry Rilla's a-going home. I have the cure prepared, put together a nice container and brush to make it look official, and I am ready to hand this over to this monster and get out of here, just as soon as he wakes up. I found him like this a few minutes ago, totally out cold. Would be a good time to gather some data on a deeply, magically complex sentient creature, but I want to go home, and ending his little nappy sounds more satisfying. Materials for this experiment. A big stick and a week's worth of malice. Testing now. (laughs) Ah! That is why you must never touch me while I am sleeping. Okay. And you, I told you not to sing that. Ah. I don't care how tired I looked. You cannot just lullaby me like some hatchling anymore. It's inappropriate. Ah. Don't do it again. Well, Amaryllis, I thank you for the wake-up call, but I have business to attend to. No, you don't. Excuse me? What were you going to do? Build more creations to help your keep? You don't have to anymore. I found the cure. You... What? I have it. And a sample of the infected tissue right here. I'll show you how it works. It's simple, really. You just... I know how a brush works, yes. All right... You have to give it a second to take hold, and be careful not to touch it until it's done. It... it only works on plants. It would burn our hands. Definitely. I see. Hand it here. Hang on, hang on. And... done. And the best part is that it's preventative, too. So you don't need me to make any more of it. Just spread this around a little, and the keep will take care of itself. Well, I have to say that I'm impressed, Amaryllis. You did this... Much more quickly than I'd imagined. You may go now. Really? Just like that? I would rather the silence, yes. You look tired. Go find a soft patch and hibernate. Or pupate, or whatever it is humans do. I'd really rather pupate at home, Aram. Well, I can't just let you go that quickly, can I? I have rigorous checks I'll have to perform. I'll have to ask the Keep what it thinks. You don't care what the Keep thinks. There are many steps involved, Amaryllis. You'll have to wait. To wait? You want me to wait? My cure works, doesn't it? It appears to. Prove it doesn't. Try it on all the disease you want. This treats it. And what did you say I got if I found a treatment? You know fully well. I want to hear you say it. What was our deal, Aram? (sighs) 
You aren't going to let me leave. You were never going to let me go, were you? Oh, and did you really expect me to? Did you really think I could? It's pretty easy, Aram. You just open the door and... <gasps> and what, Amaryllis? What? Let you go back to your hive and tell all the humans what the monster is up to. Where to find him, how to kill him, how many pieces to cut him into. I wouldn't. I, I don't want to. A war is on. What we want stopped being relevant the moment the first stone was thrown, no matter who threw it. But that's not fair. It is how things work. Fair and unfair are fables, myths. They can exist only if there are stable rules that govern all action, all things, but there are no rules here. Only survival by any means necessary. I must protect myself and my keep. If you were in my position, I would expect you to do the same. I would allow you to live here, in my greenhouse, as thanks. But I can give nothing else. <clears throat> you lied to me. All those little favors, those talks we had, you tricked me. We had a deal. What would you have me do, then? Let me go. And then what? <laughs> you humans. So naive, aren't you? The sun itself could descend upon your bald little bodies. But until the end, you'd be standing in its rays, searching for a way to change its course. Running calculations until it cremated you to the last. And you wouldn't? Die for nothing? Of course not. I would survive in the shade until every man and monster was ash, and then I would finally have peace. Farewell, human. I'll be sure to test your cure right away. No! You don't get to take that if I don't get to... Ugh! Get back here, you... You monster! I was so angry with him that it took me a while to remember that the cure I'd given him was bogus. And that meant I didn't have time to wallow. By the next morning, Aram would know I'd tricked him. So, by the next morning, I'd probably be dead. And if I was ever going to escape, that night was my only chance to do it. I started by reviewing my notes. When serrated palms feel threatened, they become sharp enough to cut through solid rock. Commotion is an afterthought for the walking bonsai. Excellent reflexes. They skittish, McCrackens. They need only to know that you mean them no harm. Once you get them galloping up walls across the ceiling. And then there was the hermit and the creatures it made. So I had my method, my means, my theory. I didn't have any time to test it, but... That didn't matter. I'd only get one shot at this anyway. So when night fell, and on the ceiling high above, the keep's solar bioluminescence faded, I gathered my supplies and began my escape. Shh, shh, it's okay. You're going to be okay. It's just a plant. It's not going to hurt you. It's not going to hurt you. <clears throat> Research log 4295. I have my supplies. I am entering the hermit now. <clears throat> shh, shh, come on. It can't. No way. I would like to correct my previous assumption. The big flower bulb is not the hermit. This is... The Moonlit Hermit. Yeah! Shh. Petals. Five. Each around three inches long. Translucent. A soft glow like... Like stars through mist. That's how Dad's notes described it. It has no leaves, no roots even. Just its stem. Which Vogel's called... A single strand the color and thickness of spider silk. The bloom is huge comparatively, way too heavy for the stem, but it's holding itself up. When the lizard said hermit, I hoped, but I've hoped for this a million times before. It's just a legend, but it's here. 
I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I... Okay, escape first. Gloat over the find of the century later. I don't see anything else in here, so does that mean... The moonlit hermit can just bring things to life? I need to check some of my recorder's notes. End of log. All right. Notes reviewed. I had a lot of them. Quick summary. The moonlit hermit. A flower with no ability to reproduce, feed, drink, nothing. And yet it lives. Supposed to grow in the shadows of deep caves and supposed to be magical in composition. A monster, technically. That's the fairy tale, anyway. Vogel's first citadel panaceas obviously suggest it was sought by early kings as some kind of solution to death. But I forgot that Reynard's Specimens of the Northern Wilds mentions it, too. A glowing point upon the cliff, her tears shall plant the Fay Bloom's gift. That, of course, being a reference to a contemporary misconception of hallucinations or Fay's gifts first sighted in... It doesn't matter. Whatever weird things it made happened below it. When it was... crying. No nectar? Then how... <gasps> was that hissing? Did you hear hissing? <coughs> Alright. Time to go. Place the serrated frond here, the bonsai root here, and... tie them together... there. Now... cry! Cry! Okay, uh, gotta think like the impossible singing castle. Make you cry. How do I make you cry? What is all that racket? Okay, sad story. Uh, once upon a time, there was a uh, little girl, and she had these two parents who were doctors, and they helped people a lot. Only one day it turned out the doctors weren't doctors so much as witches, <laughs> and magic was super mega illegal in the Citadel, and so they were exiled, which wasn't great, and the girl had to live with her friend's parents, only she didn't think it was fair, so she kept going over her parents' old notes to try and prove that they weren't magic, or at least that magic was really just super complicated medicine, only I got caught, and they exiled me too. So I built a cool hut right outside the Citadel, and I've been waiting for them ever since. But they still haven't come back, even though the new queen lifted our exiles, and I don't know if they're even alive. The end. Cry! Oh, come on! Seriously, nothing? Good. Great. Now the spider's dripping. Dripping. Dripping! Oh, really, you idiot! The crying's just a metaphor! Take out my canteen, a few drops to the hermit, then the components, and... It's working. The frond and the bonsai are growing together, fusing, reacting. Just like I planned. A living saw. A serrated palm blade sharp enough to cut through the keep. A walking bonsai handle with reflexes fast enough to protect me. And it's... Alive. Amaryllis. The Macrachnids are on your square No, you don't. You're my ride out of here. So hold still. I just have to grab my saw and... Where'd the saw go? What's that sound? <coughs> shh, shh. That's... That can't be... <coughs> Research log entry. Who cares? The saw. It's not a saw. It's... How the hell do I describe it? Like... A huge inchworm, maybe? Its head is a freaking leaf sword, and its tail is a tree with a hell of a kick, and then it... It, it got the McCracknid. The poor thing still sounds alive, but... It just took its body. The thing's using it like a big eight-fingered hand, grabbing and climbing, and... Where'd it go? Wh what? I think I'm... Ah! No, no, no. Listen to me. Can you listen? This is the, um, 
swamp of Titan's blooms where there's a lord called Aram and... <laughs> Stop it! I made you! I made... Ah! You made a mess! Now step aside! Aram! Don't you order me, you insolent... Ah! Yeah. Aram! Watch out! Is it... dead? It appears to be. What do you think you're doing? I just... wanted to get a closer look. And that recording device, then? That's supposed to help with your look? There might be some useful data. Data? Answers? Your mindless hunt for those things nearly killed us tonight. Do you understand that? No, actually. I'm pretty sure what nearly killed us was when you wouldn't let me go home. This again. What else was I supposed to do? Not toying with forces beyond your comprehension seems like a good place to start. Oh, like you understand how the hermit works perfectly. Perhaps not. But I do know better than to grant the desire to live to something that could kill me. Aram. No, you've talked entirely enough. You're lucky that you're such a useful doctor, little primate, or your throat... Aram, move! Go! It's getting ready to attack again. We have to move! My side! The blade! Ah. Oh, saints. Oh, saints, protect us! Your house can just do that? Grow a vine as thick as a tree trunk and just punch someone with it? It isn't that impressive. Help me up. Not that impressive. It blew up the hermit's cage. It shot that abomination straight through the wall. I told you that it is my duty to protect it. That duty goes in more than one direction. Now help me. Uh Uh-oh. It's... petrified. Again. It's not... I did it! Aram. You told me you'd found the cure. You told me once I applied it, this would end. I... So what was it then? Stupidity? Or a lie? You told me I could go home. You said... I would like you to turn that thing off. What? Your recorder. I asked you to turn it off. But my notes. If you think you can order me around after everything you've done... It is not an order. It is a request. I saved your life twice tonight. How many more times do I have to do it before you'll turn that thing off? If you've enjoyed this tale, please consider donating to the Penumbra on Patreon. Our artists work tirelessly to bring you these stories, and if you have the means, we hope you will support our efforts. Every dollar helps. You can find that page at patreon.com slash the Penumbra podcast. If you support us on Patreon at a $10 level or higher, you will receive access to commentary tracks like this one from actor Noah Symes and co-creators Sophie Kaner and Kevin Vibert. It has... Nothing to do with Damien or their fight. Right. right. He has right. no idea, right. it seems, what their connection even is. Right. But it's just, I, I, I love that he, and it ha- did have to do with those grubs, and then even that right. ended Was up being immaterial. like right. a, a right. dead end, <laughs> both in his investigation and plot-wise. <laughs> yeah, that was 
funny for us. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's been. How long has it been? Like when? You can also support the Penumbra by liking us on Facebook, following us on Twitter at the Penumbra Pod, following us on Tumblr at the Penumbra Podcast, telling your friends about us, telling your friends to tell their friends about us, and especially by rating and reviewing our podcast on iTunes. Every rating, comment, and kind word spreads our stories further and inspires us to keep creating more and better tales to come. We would like to give special thanks to all who support us on Patreon, but especially to Camille Blanton, Fiona Parker, Ota Arcana, Juno Yanto, Reagan Co, KC, Kim Zygan, Aetha Lang, Vron, Charlie Spiegel, Minchowski, and Jamie Gunter for their incredibly generous contributions per episode. Thank you. Did you know that the Penumbra has merchandise for sale? It's true. The Penumbra has partnered with DFTBA to bring you the posters, shirts, and pins your heart desires. Just go to dftba.com and search for the Penumbra podcast. This tale, The Moonlit Hermit, was told by the following people. Melissa Enulet as Rilla, Noah Symes as Lord Aram, Kate Jones and Kat Buckingham as The Keep, and Matthew Zanzinger as Sir Damien. The Penumbra is created and produced by Sophie Kaner and Kevin Vibert. If you wish to know more about our ever-expanding, infinitely creative team of artists, musicians, editors, designers, and managers, you can read about them in the show notes of this episode. I'm afraid this is the end of the line for today, dear traveler. We hope you will ride with the Penumbra again soon. <laughs>